Hey everyone, Tim here. So as you can see from that intro, it is rainy in Boulder. Uh, so no camping, no working on the camper, no skiing this weekend. So I figured I would finally take an opportunity to edit the video of the rest of the galley built. So in the previous video, I showed you making the rough frame for the galley. If you haven't seen that video yet, I suggest you go check it out right up there. I use one by twos and half inch plywood to start to make the frame and things like that. In this video, I'm gonna show finishing the majority of the galley. I'm gonna show you doing all the sanding and staining. I'm gonna show you cutting some holes in the camper to pass my water lines into. Uh, I'm gonna show you adjusting the appliance location. If you remember from the last video, I had trouble where the sink was. I kinda didn't account for the faucet, so I had to fix that up a little bit. Uh, then I put the linoleum countertop on. That came out beautifully. And finally put the galley into the camper. I'm really happy with how it all came out. I've used the camper a few times since I put it in and I'm really happy with how it's functional and looks great. And so I hope you enjoy this video and follow along through all those working steps. Another truck camper day. Got the truck camper pulled up. Pick it up on the galley project where I left off. I borrowed some, I borrowed a hole saw kit and I'm gonna do some, some cutting of some, some holes that I need for the galley. is the water fill port. This hole allows the water fill line to pass into the camper. And this hole is for the drain for the water tank. the wires passing through the countertop, I'm gonna just slice off a little piece. And then I test fit the appliances again, just to make sure everything was still lining up properly. And then if you remember from the last video, I had actually kind of messed up where I was putting my faucet. I didn't leave enough room behind my sink to install my faucet. And so what I decided to do was actually get out the saw and start cutting up that beautiful frame in order to shift the sink forward a little bit and install the faucet behind it like a normal sink would. So not the most professional job in the world, but in the end it actually worked out just fine. Just took a little extra time to uh, arrange things and glue some stuff back together. We went back and forth a lot trying to figure out if there was a solution that didn't involve cutting up the brand new frame. This is my nice carpentry I did last time, but I'm about to cut it out. I also had to make some adjustments on my nice countertop to shift the sink a little forward. So the jerry rigging is really going to start now. I'm gluing plywood back into plywood. I did add supports though. Thank you. 
can see, the galley project was quickly turning from a well-made project into more of a glue and sawdust type of operation. Luckily, everything kept working just fine, and it allowed me to put my faucet behind my sink again like a normal system would. Uh, and so I'm, I'm happy I did that. It worked out just fine in the end. This is my stove, these are my jerry-rigged uh, uh, plywood joints, which I'll sand down, but they're actually pretty sturdy, I, I tested them out. Seat fits in almost perfectly. It's a little snug on this side, so I'll sand it when I do it next. Um, and now we're putting in the faucet. Let me get it. Here's the faucet. It's gonna go right like this. Gotta drill a hole. I actually had to cut into my pretty uh, main support, so I'm going to put in this second piece to kind of reinforce this. So this area again is like the utility area. This is where the propane lives and this is where the water tank lives. And then this is my first wall to close off the rest of my storage area. And before, I had used these pocket screws to hide this, but actually after thinking about it a little bit more, I'm gonna take these pack screws out and just screw it from the inside. It's in a cabinet, so the you know if the screws are, are visible, it's not a big deal. And that will allow me to take this off and get into here at a later date, just trying to prepare for the future, because things will go wrong. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that real quick. So I've done everything twice, but almost everything I've done twice. the frame of the galley actually figured out for real it was time to stain and seal everything I actually have way more footage of this than we need my wife luckily stepped in and had me cut this back quite a bit here's a couple shots of staining the galley some sanding some finishing I use a, a nice sealant on everything and it, it all came out really well so let's check that out real quick <laughs> I did multiple coats of stain over multiple days. And then just to protect the wood, I flipped it over and stained the underside as well. This is the countertop. I uh, still need to get the laminate for it. Notice that I actually glued in pieces just with like butt joint, not a real joint at all. Uh, we'll see how that turns out. Tune in in like a year for countertop rebuild part two. Uh, but right now I'm just gonna round out the corners. So.
rounded off all the corners. This is the most important one. It's kind of like the island part that's going to stick out. I realize maybe the other ones weren't as important. I didn't round them out as much, so should be good. With everything stained, it was time to give it a clear coat. There's links in the description below for all these products. the first coat on almost everything. Let it dry for like six hours, do it again later tonight. In between coats of polyurethane, I also sanded with some fine grit sandpaper. Then it was time for another coat of polyurethane. The painting session done. did three coats of the polyurethane, but I didn't feel like we needed to show all that. So it was two coats of stains, three coats of polyurethane, sanding between the coats of polyurethane. It came out absolutely beautifully. So with the frame all finished, stained, sealed, all that good stuff, it was time to finally put that countertop together. I ordered the laminate actually from Home Depot and had it shipped to my house. I wanted a specific color to match the rest of the camper. We've already spent this much time trying to make it look good. Might as well go all the way. They only stock maybe two or three colors down at the store. I also bought a bunch of things off Amazon that I would need for this project. I bought things like a J-roller, some glue, things like that. I'll show all that real quick just because you might find it interesting. Lastly, I also bought a, an attachment for my Dremel that turns the Dremel into like a router. I'll show that. You'll see me using it. I do not suggest you buy that. That thing ended up breaking and ended up destroying my Dremel. It was a big pain in the buns. Um, so I would highly suggest you just cut a laminate the way they tell you to on the internet and everywhere else, which is with a big router. So I actually ended up going to buy a, a new router. So one Dremel down, but I got a new router. So here it is, kind of purchasing some things, talking about what I got for the project, and then getting into the lane of the laminate. I also will warn you, putting that laminate down, I was having all sorts of trouble because of that crappy router attachment. And also I just didn't know what I was doing, so I didn't shoot a ton of footage. Um, and so you kind of see it kind of jumps ahead but it, it is all there eventually. So have fun if you try to follow along with something like that, but I suggest you go watch another YouTube video on how to lay down laminate. It's pretty straightforward after you get the hang of it. So I got a bunch of packages of things to finish up this project. I bought myself one of these uh, Dremel router things. I'll use that to cut some stuff. I bought this J-roller. We'll use this um, on the uh, countertop. What else? Oh, the routing bits for the Dremel. I can't wait to try all that out. Amazon. Thank you. This item is ready to ship. I don't know what this is. Adhesive. Oh, okay. It's more HH66. I ran out and I broke a little piece on the uh, canvas the other day. So this will come in handy. I just wanted to have more in the shop. Sounds kind of expensive, but for the vinyl things I do, 
the camper, it's the best, I think. Now this is the, why does this say floor tile? This is stuff uh, to glue down the countertop. This is edging for the countertop and all the uh, cabinets and things like that. Black edging. And then also what I didn't show is I've got, I custom ordered a bunch of Formica rolled on the countertop. We wanted a gray to match everything else. I'm gonna try to put the countertop on, let's get to it. I just finished cutting out the laminate. Uh, I didn't film any of that because it was super frustrating. I had a huge trouble getting all that out. Uh, in the end though, the Dremel bit worked pretty well. Let me grab it. That bit worked pretty well for cutting clean lines. Uh, we don't have the final cuts anyways now. So now I'm gonna glue Formica to the wood. I'm using this stuff. It's floor tile glue, but it should work just fine. How this particular glue worked was that you put it on both surfaces and then let it dry to a clear finish and then you clamp your surfaces together. So just to talk a little bit about what we did with the countertop, we cut the laminate to a rough shape that fit the countertop, but it was too big. So that way there was excess on every corner and every side. And then the idea was that you'd come in with a router which would go flush up against the countertop and then trim that laminate or formica perfectly to fit. Uh, what you're gonna see here in two seconds is one, an example of kind of how we left about an inch or so of overlap all the way around. And then two, more importantly, you're gonna watch my Dremel Stop working. I blew up my Dremel, I'm trying to do that with the whole little thing. This is going back to Amazon for sure, it's garbage. And uh, I just did the real deal and just went out and bought a uh, proper uh, router and proper router bits now. So we should be in much better shape. Just buy the right tools. Just buy the right tools. This is the cut that I had going before with the little Dremel router top job thing I was doing and I just bought a real router and it's gonna do so much better. Much, much nicer cut. Just buy the right tool, so, so much better. So after getting the flush bit from for a proper router, the rest of the cutting took like no time at all. Just buy the right tool, like I just said. So with the countertop installed, it was glued down, trimmed up all the way around. It was time to put the black edging around. This actually didn't get off Amazon. I got off some other website I can't remember right now, but I'll make sure I link below. I've never used this type of stuff before, but it's just an iron-on plastic edging. So when you heat it up, the glue 
kind of starts to activate and it just sticks to the wood. Um, it looks absolutely beautiful in the end. So I'm really happy with how it came out and trimming it again was, was pretty straightforward. I, I went and bought the right edge, edge trimming tool, which was a good call uh, for only $10. So yeah, here is putting that edge banding on the edge of the countertop. So here's that edging stuff I was talking about. Um, nice black on this side, glue that heats up on this side. Worked out really, really well. You can see I struggled a little bit at the beginning, but in all honesty, this was super easy. Uh, and this is the edge trimmer that I was talking about too. It essentially just holds a razor blade, and when you like kind of run it up, if you've ever sharpened skis, it's really similar, and it just cuts, cuts the edge banding off at the perfect spot. So that went really, really smoothly and it, and it looks great in the end. After that, it was time to then screw the countertop down onto the whole frame. Just a couple quick shots of that and then we'll put it in the camper. And so that was it. The counter was finally in the camper and it looks so great. I am again so thrilled with how it came out. It was definitely a ton of work, but I really enjoyed the woodworking project. Like I said before, I actually have a little bit of experience with woodworking, so everything wasn't a completely brand new activity to me, which kind of kept things moving along and, and it was pretty enjoyable for me. Projects that still need to be done, I still need to hook up the propane and the water system, so be on the lookout for those coming up in future videos. Also, the camper is in great shape now, so I plan on using it a ton this summer. So I'll be coming out with videos of both finishing up kind of the projects around the camper, as well as actually using it and camping in the mountains of Colorado. So please consider hitting subscribe. If you enjoy this video, hit like. Uh, if you have more questions about either this or anything about my truck camper or my truck or anything at all, go ahead and uh, drop a comment. I'll be doing the turns all year this year again too, which is when I ski every month of the year in Colorado. And so that should be pretty fun. So thanks again for watching and we will see you again soon. Bye.